Hello, Vince Riley here, CFI, double I, fixed wing, and rotor wing. Today we'll talk about altimeter errors. After watching this video, you'll have a more thorough understanding of how the altimeter functions, uh, which will in turn make it easier for you to understand what causes altimeter errors. Um, right here's a very informative diagram of an altimeter from the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. And admit it, we've all been there before. We're sitting with an instructor or a DPE and they begin to ask systems questions and we're quietly praying they don't ask us about the pitot-static system because then you'd have to pull out a bunch of terms like Colesman window, aneroid element, true altitude, absolute altitude, high to low lookout below. Well, how about when you're reading about altimeter errors and you think, what the? <laughs> well, in the next five minutes, I'm going to help you understand what causes altimeter errors and how to correct for these errors. But first, let's start with some terms. True altitude is your altitude above mean sea level. Absolute altitude is your altitude above the ground level, or AGL we call it. Indicated altitude is basically what you see on your altimeter and what the altimeter reads. And then we have pressure and density altitude, And then you have the Colesman window. This is where you set the altimeter to adjust to non-standard pressures. Now, let's get to know the altimeter a little better. To simplify this lesson, think of the altimeter as a cylinder with a small hole in the back that allows outside air to enter and to exit through the aircraft's static port. Inside the cylinder is a couple of wafers, or aneroid elements. The pressure inside the aneroid element is always equal to 29.92 inches of mercury, or standard pressure. But to better understand what is going on inside the altimeter, think of this element as a sealed balloon. You know, no air in or out of the aneroid element. The aneroid element is connected by mechanical linkage to the dials on the front of the altimeter. And so, any expansion or compression of the aneroid element moves the dials of the altimeter. During a descent, the outside air pressure will increase the pressure of the altimeter cylinder. This simultaneously causes a compression or squishing of the aneroid element, which will indicate a corresponding decrease in the indicated altitude. Conversely, if you climb, the outside air pressure will decrease and pressure surrounding the aneroid element this simultaneously allows the aneroid element to expand, which will indicate a corresponding increase in indicated altitude. Additionally, it's important to note that if the air is cooled or heated without changing altitude, it will cause the same effect as changing altitude. So, as we discussed in the previous section, aside from mechanical failures, incorrect altitude indications are caused by changes in temperature, pressure, or both. It will be easy to determine incorrect readings by asking yourself, where does this stupid thing think it is, in referring to the altimeter. Next, we need to understand the properties of a normal column of air. In a normal column of air, the higher pressure is near the ground and lower pressures are found up, above, on top. Additionally, as we descend, the air is warmer and normally the temperatures decrease as altitude increases. So in other words, as you go higher, the air is colder. As we progress through a few of the examples, I want you to ask yourself each time, where does the altimeter think it is due to the change in surrounding air pressure and temperature? In our first example, let's start when the aircraft is flying from warm air to cold air. Without adjusting the altimeter setting, where does the altimeter think it is if you're traveling from warm air to cold air? Since cold air is higher, the altimeter thinks it's climbing, and if the pilot did nothing, the altimeter will display a higher altitude. We will just say 7,200 feet. Without changing the altimeter setting to adjust for this difference in air temperature, the pilot would gradually descend to maintain an indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. This would mean the pilot is now flying 200 feet lower than desired. The aircraft's true altitude, the altitude above mean sea level, will be lower than indicated. Hence the term, high to low, look out below. In this next example, when the aircraft is flying from cold air to warm air, without adjusting the altimeter setting, where does the altimeter think it is if you're traveling from cold air to warm air? Since warmer air is lower, the altimeter thinks that it's descending. And if the pilot did nothing, the altimeter will display a lower altitude. We'll just say 6,800 feet. 
Slowly, the pilot will climb to maintain the same indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. Without changing the altimeter setting to adjust for this difference in the air temperature, the pilot would gradually climb to maintain an indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. This would mean that the pilot is now flying 200 feet above the intended altitude. The aircraft's true altitude, the altitude above mean sea level, will be higher than indicated. This next example, when the aircraft is flying from high pressure to low pressure, without adjusting the altimeter setting, where does the altimeter think it is if you're traveling from high pressure to lower pressure? Right, since lower pressure air is higher, the altimeter thinks that it's climbing. And if the pilot did nothing, the altimeter would display a higher altitude. We'll just say, again, 7,200 feet. Slowly, the pilot will descend to maintain the same indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. Without changing the altimeter setting to adjust for this difference in air pressure, the pilot would gradually descend to maintain an indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. This would mean the pilot is now flying 200 feet lower than desired. The aircraft's true altitude, the altitude above mean sea level, will be lower than indicated. Hence the term, again, high to low, look out below. Now, imagine the aircraft is flying from low pressure to a higher pressure. Without adjusting the altimeter setting, where does the altimeter think it is if you're traveling from low pressure to higher pressure? Right, since higher pressure is lower, the altimeter thinks that it's descending. And if the pilot did nothing, the altimeter would display a lower altitude. We'll just say 6,800 feet. Slowly though, the pilot will climb to maintain the same indicated altitude in the cockpit of 7,000 feet. Without changing the altimeter setting to adjust for this difference in air pressure, the pilot would gradually climb to maintain an indicated altitude of 7,000 feet. This would mean the pilot is now flying 200 feet higher than desired. The aircraft's true altitude, the altitude above mean sea level, will be higher than indicated. So how can we avoid such errors? How about just adjusting the altimeter to the surrounding pressure? You might be asking yourself, why would I care if I'm cruising a couple hundred feet higher or lower at 10,500 feet? Well, as pilots, and especially professional pilots, it's all about precision, especially when ATC assigns you an altitude to hold or when you decide to shoot that approach at an airport 500 miles away. When the decision altitude of an approach may only be 200 feet AGL, it will mean the difference between a $100 hamburger and becoming worm food. So how can we avoid such errors? Right, how about just adjusting the altimeter to the surrounding pressure? There are multiple ways to maintain the most accurate altimeter setting, and that's by getting the nearest ATIS or AWAS, or from Flight Service or ARTCC, which is Air Route Traffic Control Center, you know the folks you normally fly follow with. An additional way to stay updated to the nearest altimeter setting is by setting the fields at the bottom of ForeFlight to show the nearest Barrow setting. So again, thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. And here are two more links. One um, on how to determine your position using a VOR and then another one on VFR airspace. And remember, if you thought this video was helpful, hit that thumbs up button and leave a like.